Hey everybody, it's Jeff and we are on the hunt for great stocks and big profits here at The Good Buy Report. By the way, make sure to like and subscribe my YouTube channel and also check out my website. Think about becoming a subscriber or even a premium subscriber there. You know, if you want to successfully invest or trade, uh, profiting both in the bull markets and surviving through you know, the inevitable corrections in bear markets, occasional rare bear markets, but they do happen. Uh, it helps to be able to adapt quickly to things if uh, you know, the market or your expectations aren't going the way that you originally planned. For instance, for me, I posted a video a few weeks ago. Uh, I called it the Labor Day phenomenon. And I basically said that I expected the uh, overall market to continue to trudge higher, at least through the end of Labor Day. Now, I, I really doubt that that's the case anymore with the action of the last handful of days. But, uh, you know, right now to call what's happening in the S&P 500 and NASDAQ a sell-off is still kind of a stretch. I mean, we're only down about 1% from the, uh, the all-time highs. But, you know, we should continue to watch the Russell 2000 small cap index. Uh, it was up as much as 1.5% in, you know, today's uh, Friday rebound session. Uh, but it's down about 4% in the past seven trading sessions. And it's down around 9, 9.5% since hitting its all-time highs, which were way back in, uh, in March. So what are folks uh, worried about? I mean, no surprise to you, I'm sure. Uh, but, of course... People, number one, are worried about the Delta variant and its impact on the economy. Two, they're worried about the Federal Reserve's uh, noises that they're making, their comments about tapering. And tapering is this uh, effort that they've done a few times in the past where they have gone in and bought large amounts of corporate bonds, mortgage, bo mortgage bonds, that sort of stuff. And, uh, and they do that to help support corporate borrowing. And by extension, it provides liquidity and helps the, the stock market. Uh, also, let's face it, folks need something to worry about. It's late summer, it's before uh, the Labor Day holiday, and trading conditions are slow. The other part is, you know, the market may need a rest. We have to uh, basically make sure we understand that possibility. The S&P 500 has gone something like 200 trading sessions without a sell-off of even 5% off the all-time highs. And you know, the longer we go on this, the more likely it is that we're going to get a sell-off or a, something bigger uh, that will happen to us. So, uh, you know, if the market continues to plow higher from here, uh, you know, none of, of what I'm about to say is going to matter. On the other hand, sell-offs, corrections, and the rare bear markets, uh, you know, they're, they're tricky, uh, dangerous animals. And, you know, I say all this not to scare you, but to prepare you just in case uh, something bigger is in store uh, because nobody really tells you this kind of stuff when you're out there trading on your own, especially when you're new as a trader or investor. We don't know when a big sell-off, a correction or a bear market is, is going to strike. Uh, but when they do, you know, they're designed to inflict maximum uh, heartbreak and disappointment in traders and investors like us. And that's the process that a market uh, goes through. It can take a few days. It can take a few weeks. It can take uh, months. In 2008, 2009, really starting from 2007, you know, it took uh, really about a year and a half for the market to really uh, find a, a true bottom. So when conditions are right for a bigger sell-off, a nice rebound day, like Today was basically a, one of those, following a tough session on, on Thursday. Uh, a nice rebound day can be created uh, in, in a process that market pros call tape painting. Now, the term tape painting comes from the pre-computer days when you know, a bank or a, a trading office or a large investor, if he could afford it, would uh, get stock quotes via a telegraph machine and the telegraph would have this roll of of paper tape on it that would you know, print out the stock quotes uh, on it you know as it re was received from the floor of the new york stock exchange but in practice you know the modern day tape painting uh is where at often at peaks in the market 
uh, institutional big money traders will buy just enough of key stocks. Let's say these days that would be Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, uh, maybe uh, Nvidia and a few others uh, tossed in. And they'll buy just enough of those to make the major indexes look good, to look healthy, uh, you know, if you're just going by how the market is doing. And the process of tape painting tends to you know, draw in new investors, new traders like, uh, you know, like moths and mosquitoes to the, uh, you know, the, the blue, the glowing blue bug zapper that I have in my uh, backyard here in Florida. Meanwhile, uh, these same institutions, futures traders, uh, you know, that trade on the futures markets in Chicago will quietly uh, buy up the uh, short S&P 500 and NASDAQ futures contracts. So they are positioning themselves to make money if and when the broader equity market heads lower. So you know, think of it this way. After a nice rebound day, uh, as today possibly was, you know, we go to bed that night thinking, well, you know, I bought this dip in the market. Uh, the stocks that I, I bought did well and I'm going to add more. I think the sell off is over and it's all higher from here. Right. Well, the next morning or let's say Monday morning, uh, if, if you know what I'm saying actually proves to be correct. And I have no idea on that. But uh, on the following morning, we wake up and suddenly you know, we check our computer and the S&P 500 futures are down 30, 40, 50 points. And then often you'll think, well, OK, this is just a fake out, right? This is just another test. I'm going to double down on my uh, my new positions. I'm, I'm going to show Mr. Market who's boss here. Right. And that's the point. We all at peaks in the market have maximum confidence in our abilities. And instead, what happens? In a real correction, Mr. Market drops even further into the abyss, and then we're really in trouble. So that's why I say that sell-offs, corrections, and rare you know, bear markets, which can last a few days, a few weeks, or months, are built on heartbreak. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen in, uh, in coming days. It's just something that I want you to, to watch for so that if it does happen, you're not surprised. Now, likewise, for another sign, a typical sign of a weakening market, which is what I call the late day fade. So we're talking about a trading session that may start off strong, full of vigor, and uh, everyone feels like, oh, okay, I'm buying the dip here and it's off to the races. But at some point during that session, it might be after the first hour, after the second hour, it might happen in the very last hour of trading, the market begins losing altitude and it continues to do so uh, in, in progressively bigger chunks through the closing bell at 4 p.m. You know, Eastern time here on the East Coast. So in my experience, you know, intraday uh, or late day fades into the close seem to happen less often than they did years ago. That's just you know, my sort of anecdotal observation. Uh, maybe it has something to do with you know, the, the fact that there's a lot of uh, program algorithmic trading that happens these days. But the point being, you know, there are lots of uh, both human traders and computerized trading programs out there that trade on a technical basis on uh, technical trading parameters. And they may automatically buy, you know, the morning lows and then sell, you know, at the midpoint of the prior day's uh, range of, of stock prices, you know, those sorts of things that are built into these deals. Uh, so they sell at some other technical waypoint and they can keep a market like ours in rebound mode for a day, sometimes for a handful of days. And they lull us to sleep thinking, you know, everything is good. And then just as suddenly they can basically put the market back into the tank and into maximum uh, fear mode. So, again, that's one of the things that uh, nobody ever tells you when you start trading or investing on your own. And quite often you have to learn it. Uh, the hard way. And it, it's never fun, of course, when that happens. So just keep this in mind as we go forward, whether, uh, you know, what I'm saying turns out to be, uh, you know, a, an accurate uh, forewarning or not. Uh, the stock market has a subtle way of luring us in and keeping us interested uh, when we you know, we'll put lots of uh, new money to work. Uh, our emotions are fully committed to 
a, a bullish outcome, and then it suddenly just dashes their hopes and dreams, often when it's really too late to really do too much about it. In fact, there's an old saying that bull markets take the escalator up and bear markets take the elevator down, meaning you know, bull markets kind of glide higher, if you will, in a broad sense, while uh, bear markets tend to be uh, erratic and go down, take the market down much faster. So something just to keep in mind as we move forward here in the sessions ahead. I'm Jeff Yastine. Hope you have a great weekend. Wishing you the best of goodbyes.